are gathering him. We gather acknowledging the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of this land to praise and worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Good evening and welcome everyone. And I really mean that. <laughs> Troy and Monique are lovely, but uh, it's a really good celebrating mass with a whole lot of other people. And even though there are limited numbers here tonight, uh, I hope this builds up. Even if I can only see half your faces, it's still better than what I've experienced over the last several months. As we gather to celebrate the mysteries of God's love of us, let's come before God and each other, acknowledging that we're always a people in need of healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us give glory and praise to God. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A 
A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the prophet set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not, will not be emptied and the jug of oil will, will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as her and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever who executes, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind and lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous and watches over the strangers. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord, Lord will reign, reign forever, forever. Your, your God, O Zion, Zion, for all generations. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year, with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, Christ has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that comes the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus was teaching in the temple and a large crowd was listening to him. He said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces but to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which were worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and he said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything that she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Whatever studies in scripture I've done has really amazed me in the way the the books that we have in our Bible have been written. Because, I don't know, I guess beforehand I thought somebody sat down and started writing, but they're very cleverly, very expertly, and precisely written documents. And so if you ever get a chance in your time, either on Zoom or in real life, to join a um, scripture study group, please do so. It will enlighten your faith and it will enlighten the way that you read scripture forever afterwards. And when I think of this particular gospel, I think of the way that Mark organised the gospel. And he must have had considered this story of the widow to be especially significant because he kept it for the very last scene of Jesus' public ministry. There's a very important point that he wants to make out of this. Throughout the Gospels, what Jesus appears to abhor more than anything else is hypocrisy. The harshest condemnation of the scribes and the Pharisees is that they're hypocrites. And in this passage, while Jesus hates the scribes parading around and claiming honour that is really not their due, what really sees him condemn them is their mistreatment of the marginalised people, in this instance the widows, while at the same time making a show of lengthy prayers. We cannot praise God in prayer while at the same time mistreat our neighbour. That is hypocrisy. All our actions are an extension of our prayer. We cannot celebrate the Eucharist on Sundays and fail to live it in the rest of the week. Today's Gospel sums up everything Jesus has said about what it means to be his disciple. The temple treasury is the symbol of the Christian community. Some people have many talents and they contribute generously to the community. Others, like the widow, feel that they have very little to offer but they give what they have all the same. And we might be tempted to compare different people's contributions, but we'd be sure to get it wrong. Jesus draws attention to this widow. She has very little, only two single copper coins. And she could have thought that what she had was really worth nothing at all. She could have compared her offering to that of the people around her and been too ashamed to contribute anything. She could have given one piece and kept the other. What impressed Jesus was that simply without shame or false humility, she gave all that she had. 
And so Jesus can present her as a model. Writing to the Christian community in Corinth, Paul had this to say. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. There are a variety of ministries, but the same Lord. There are a variety of ways of energising, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The Spirit of God has given each of us special gifts and whatever our life experience has been, there is a special way of loving now that only you can give. There is no one else in the world who has been in exactly the same circumstances of life. No one else has had exactly the same opportunities. No one else has had the same relationships as you do, as I do. When we place our trust in God's creative energy within us, and when we love, we are continuing the ministry of Jesus. And his heart will reach out to others through us. Each one of us is invited to contribute our gifts to the building of this community of love. And not for our sake only, but for the sake of the world. We're not asked to give what others give. We're not asked to give what we don't have. We're not expected to offer what we used to be and used to have or what we would like to have been, or what we have liked to have had if our lives had gone in different directions. We're not asked to give what we would like to have had to offer, or what others expect of us. God knows us and understands us, and all he wants is our honesty. He longs for us to come as we are, for all he wants is our love and the ways that we can make his love real for others. People watching at the temple treasury that day would have thought that the widow had given nothing worthwhile. They may have even thought that they could manage quite well without her apparent paltry contribution. But Jesus saw otherwise. She put in more than all the others because she gave herself fully, without holding back. And there are many ways that we contribute to the community. The significance of our financial contribution is borne out by what can be achieved in our parish through, our fi through your financial support. The parish news sheet, when we have a proper one, each week is filled with community building activities of the parish. And there are many others that go unnoticed. Some generously offer your time and experience to help as members of the pastoral council or others in liturgy in various ways, each one contributing to your, according to your own gifts to build and maintain this family of faith. Some of you take the body of Christ to those who can't join us here and hopefully we can start that again, helping them to know that in their sickness they are precious members of our community. Jesus in today's Gospel encourages every one of us to give ourselves in love to the building up of his body. He needs us all and we need each other. We need the old and the young. We need the well and the sick. We need everyone's love to support us in our faith and hope as we strive to draw closer to Jesus, as we strive to move out of or into a new way of living beyond COVID. The strength of family, community or society is measured by the care it gives to its weakest members. And we might think that we have little or nothing to give, but that's not true. 
we have ourselves to give. And if we offer to the community our small amount of love, our small amount of time, our small amount of patience, our small amount of experience, and offer it as best that we can with all our heart, Jesus will see, even if no one else does. Let us stand as we profess our faith in the God who loves us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Loving God, your Holy Spirit, Joe, <laughs> most of us are unused to being at Mass together, Loving God, your Holy Spirit gave the disciples new eyes, new ears and a fresh heart to proclaim the kingdom of God. We ask the same of your family, for your family in the Archdiocese of Melbourne, as we begin a new conversation about our common mission in the years ahead. We pray that like the widow in the gospel story, we may be generous in giving to the Lord, learning to trust in God's goodness so that we may be content with what we have and generous towards others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our faith community as we prepare again to share the Eucharist in the coming weeks and months. May our freedom to gather together grow, providing greater opportunities to come to know you and each other more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, that he may be granted abundant graces to guide your holy church in truth and in love so that the people of all abilities may be lovingly supported in living out their Christian calling to serve our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our community of faith may be a sign of your loving generosity, always ready to give to those who have less and to welcome the strangers in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for the deaf community in our world, and especially for the work of the John Pierce Centre. May it continue to enable deaf people to live life to the full. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone to their eternal rest, and particularly those who have died recently, especially Harry O'Connell, Helen Borjanon, and Coscienzo Casa Santa. And for those who... 
whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month of November, we pray. God, God of refuge, refuge and our strength, strength. you have made death, death itself the gateway, gateway to eternal, eternal life. Grant to those who have gone before us the joy of your, your presence. presence. Help, Help us to always hold our loved ones, loved ones in, our in our hearts. Meet us in our sorrow and lift, and lift our eyes to the peace and light of your, your constant care. care. That, that our fear will be dispelled by your love and our, and our hope, hope renewed by your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving God, giver of life, nurture us in body and spirit, so that trusting in your mercy, we may generously respond to whatever you ask of us. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We take the third Eucharistic prayer and the third acclamation. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, Mary MacKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my own peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another in a COVID way a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away this. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to fullness of life. to the body of Christ. May the blessing of the Lord be upon us as we minister the body of Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you give communion here. I'll be back. Marie, the body of Christ. 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 Thank you, sister. Tower. Sorry? No, I think that's all. Thank you.
Would you remain seated for the concluding prayer? Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit of grace, of integrity, may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And according to our custom, being the first weekend of the month, uh, we pray for and those and we um, bless those who celebrate birthdays. So if you were born in this month of November, would you like to stand? And me, and Dan, and both of you, Helen and Dan, and Megan. God of life, you are our creator and friend. We ask your blessings upon Helen and Dan and Megan, your beloved sons and daughters as they celebrate their birthdays. As a family, we thank you for the blessing of these beautiful people's lives. As they bring joy and love to their family and friends, we ask you to be with them in a special way today and on, the, on their birthdays to shower your blessings upon them. May your guiding and protecting hands be upon them always. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us show them our congratulations. And you can sit down. We don't ask how old they are. Just a few notices. Uh, you will notice that um, if you've been on the website or the YouTube, uh, I've celebrated Mass each week, just with Troy and Monique present, or with Trevor and um, Trevor D'Souza and Michelle, one or the other. Um, but as we go th forward, we will aim to live stream the Mass, either 6.30 Mass here or 6 o'clock Mass at St Thomas into the future. So you've got to behave because you'll be seen. Uh, and anyone can see you. Um, so we're starting at back masses, but uh, there's a notice at the front of the news sheet that says that the 6 p.m. mass on Saturday evenings at Sacred Heart uh, is for, and the 5 p.m. mass here on Sundays, and a Wednesday morning mass at St Thomas at 9.15 are set aside for people of unknown vaccination status. You might also notice that uh, over the last few weeks, as partly as a result of our having to reduce the hours of employment of our parish staff, we're um, combining our uh, weekly newsletters, um, those things that are common to all the parishes, particularly archdiocesan news or news that is common to the three, will be in a common area, and uh, each parish will have its own separate section. So, um, and for their own individuality. Next Sunday, next weekend, so the 13th and 14th of November, the Ladies Auxiliary are holding a plant sale um, and plants are from $5 to $10 each with a few over $10. And we've got some, something else that's progressing is that um, we're going to have you know, tap and pay when you come up for communion, you tap. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We're going to have two tap and pay machines down in the um, gathering space, and one is for the presbytery and one is for the church account. And um, it's, it doesn't steal all your money at once, but you nominate uh, how much uh, you want to contribute. So if you don't want to, um, it's, it's a way of, uh, different way of being able to contribute to the parish and the um, support of the priests and the support of our uh, parish staff. There's news about um, the plenary and a catch up on plenary. There's uh, a few pages about that. Um, there's a call for volunteers for Villa Maria in Bandura. There are several people from our parishes who already work there and it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. There are several parishioners from here who progress to Villa Maria and you'll be able to meet them and care for them and there are various things that uh, can be done um, as volunteers. Another thing that I have to say upon everything else that's happening um, 
and I'll, I'll say a bit more about that as we progress. The diocese is moving towards a restructuring, so the 210 parishes are going to become something like 50 to 60 pubs of parishes. So um, I'll give you more information about that as we go. It's a bit too much to take in at once. It was, it was too much to take, for, take in for me at once as well. Um, but we'll work towards um, how we can have representatives from our parishes beginning to talk with one another and how we can progress towards uh, the time that uh, there will be less priests and how we will call to have more uh, people volunteer um, in making this, continuing to make this a vibrant community and how we can collaborate, collaborate with one another. On top of all of this, there's uh, the Pope you may have seen has called a synod on synodality. So um, it was due to start very soon, but because there has been so much on, it has been uh, stalled till August of next year. But uh, already you can begin to look at the things that um, we're called to consider as a church that is um, saying that we need to listen to one another. Bishops, popes are saying that in order to move forward into the church in, in the future, there needs to be more listening and collaboration um, with the gifts that I spoke about in my homily with one another. But more about that into the future. Let's stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace and the joy of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Oh, one other thing I forgot to say. Uh, there are baskets in the gathering space, first collection and second collection. There's another basket for, I think it's centre care, but it's for all... There are a whole lot of collections that should have been taken up, special collections over the last six months. So uh, that collection is for the extras that uh, we haven't collected, and I'll work out how to distribute it to the various appeals. Have a great week and take care of each other. Happy birthday.